Have you ever been told that cybersecurity is just about hacking or that you need to be some kind of coding or tech wizard to get into cybersecurity? Well, I've spoken to a ton of people and those myths are just the beginning. There's a lot of misinformation out there about cybersecurity careers and today we're going to set the record straight. I'm Nathan from Station X, where we help you build your cybersecurity skills and land the career that you want. In this episode of Cybersecurity Diaries, I'll be debunking the biggest myths about cybersecurity jobs, misconceptions that could be holding you back. So stick around because the last myth could completely change your view on what it takes to break into cybersecurity. So let's get to it. The first myth we need to tackle is that cybersecurity jobs are all about hacking. This misconception comes up often. But the reality is that hacking or penetration testing is just one small part of the field. While ethical hacking can be exciting, most professionals work in areas like risk management, securing networks, SOC analysis, incident response, maybe educating users, and lots of other areas. It's about building defenses to keep attackers out, not just about breaking into systems. So if you're considering a career in cybersecurity, understand that it's much more diverse than just hacking. It's about safeguarding data and staying ahead of threats. Let's talk about the myth that cybersecurity is only for people who want to be deeply technical. While there are roles that require strong technical expertise, not everyone in cybersecurity needs to dive deep into coding, network engineering, or system architectures. Roles like risk management, compliance, auditing, cybersecurity management, focus more on strategic decisions and ensuring organizations are meeting regulatory standards. So if you don't see yourself as wanting to become highly technical, there are still plenty of career paths in cybersecurity for you. You can make a huge impact by guiding teams, by shaping security policy or ensuring compliance, all of which are critical for keeping organizations secure and which can be enjoyable and well paid. Here's a myth we need to debunk. Cybersecurity is only about technology. Many people think that cybersecurity is just about installing firewalls or encryption and antivirus software, but technology is only part of the equation. A lot of what makes an organization secure comes down to people and processes, educating employees about phishing, creating strong security policies, managing risk are just as important as the technical side. In fact, most data breaches happen because of human error, not because of technical flaws. So cybersecurity is about balancing technology with the right training, policies, behaviors, people, and process. Another myth is that cybersecurity is solely the responsibility of the IT or cybersecurity department. People often think, and including management, that once they join an organization, only the IT or security team handles cyber threats. The truth is, while cybersecurity departments implement security measures and manage defenses, the responsibility is shared across the entire organization. Management must decide how much risk to accept, not the security team, and employees play a big role in following best practices. Cybersecurity professionals act as guides, implementers, but the actions of everyone in the organization contributes to overall security. It's not just a one department job. It's woven into every part of the business or organization. Here's a myth that's common. Only mid to large organizations need cybersecurity. It's true that larger companies are the ones that can afford dedicated cybersecurity teams and have those bigger budgets, but that doesn't mean smaller businesses are off the hook for cybersecurity. Small organizations still need to implement security measures to protect themselves from threats. While they may not have the resources for dedicated staff, smart decisions like training employees on phishing attacks, enabling multi-factor authentication, and keeping software up to date can go a long way. So no matter the size of the company, cybersecurity is critical to staying protected in today's landscape. Let's address this one clearly. Cybersecurity is hard to get into. It can feel like a challenging field to break into, there's no doubt of that, but it's far, far from impossible as millions of people do work in cybersecurity showing that it obviously is possible. There are different paths to get started, but they each have their pros and cons. For example, university, but that can be expensive with degrees often costing maybe $45,000, $50,000 or more in debt, 
etc. And they don't always prepare you for practical hands-on roles. In fact, university has never really been designed for getting you into roles. It's to give you a certification and to give you some skills. You can also consider self-paced or DIY, do-it-yourself learning. While that is much cheaper than university, it has, unfortunately, a very, very low success rate. Statistically, only about 2% of people even finish a course that they buy. So much less than 1% actually get into cybersecurity through a DIY do-it-yourself approach. At Station X, we provide a more balanced approach. Our structured program offers scenario-based training, practical training, mentorship, real-world experience, all while being more affordable than traditional degrees. You'll learn exactly what's needed to break into the field with guidance every step of the way. But really, persistence is the key. With the right program, like ours or others, it becomes much more achievable. A common myth is that all cybersecurity roles are essentially the same. If you get into cybersecurity, then you're doing cybersecurity. But cybersecurity is as diverse as you can think the medical field. Just as there are surgeons, general practitioners, and specialists in medicine, cybersecurity has a wide range of roles too. From security architects who design secure systems, to malware analysts who investigate malicious software, to SOC analysts who monitor for threats, each role focuses on different areas. So whether you prefer being hands-on with technology or working in a more strategic capacity, there is a role for you in cybersecurity. The variety ensures that you can find something that aligns with your skills and interests, but certainly all roles are not the same. Let's get into this myth. Getting a few certificates, a few certifications is all you need to get started in cybersecurity. While certifications are important, they're just one piece of the puzzle. Employees want to see hands-on experience, problem-solving skills, strong communication abilities. You can't generally just pass an exam and expect to land a job. And not many people think this, but I do encounter a few people thinking this, so I've added this as a myth. You need to show that you can apply your knowledge in real-world situations. That's why at Station X we recommend things like scenario-based training, personal projects and personalized mentorship to bridge the gap between theory and practice. Don't just earn certifications, build the practical skills needed to stand out in the competitive job market. Here's another myth. All cybersecurity professionals are highly paid. While it's true that cybersecurity can be a lucrative career, especially in regions like the USA, North America, where entry level salaries can range from $80,000 all the way up to $120,000. Salaries, they vary widely based on location, experience, the value you bring, and the organization. So to maximize your earning potential, it's not just about your technical skills. A strong personal brand, effective networking, and excellent interview skills can help you get into the right organization where they pay higher salaries. So you'll also need to negotiate your compensation effectively because that initial salary often sets the foundation for your future earnings. The key is to make yourself a standout candidate, both technically and professionally, and be able to have the soft skills and communication skills to make it obvious that you have those skills. And let's clear up this last myth. All entry-level jobs in cybersecurity have unrealistic expectations of the sort of skills and experience that you should have. Yes, Job listings can seem intimidating. Asking for multiple years of experience and a range of certificates for even junior positions. But here's the reality. Cybersecurity, we consider it in our model to be a stage three role, meaning employers expect candidates to have some foundational experience, whether that's from IT, from networking, from even help desk positions. You don't need to tick every box on the job spec but you do need to focus on your transferable skills and gaining hands-on experience through projects, maybe internships, the right sort of programs, or personal labs. Employees want to see potential in those junior roles and a willingness to learn. So don't let unrealistic listings hold you back from applying, but make sure you get yourself on the right sort of program where you can gain that practical experience and you also know how to best represent your skills. All right, 
those are some of the biggest myths about cybersecurity that's been debunked. Hopefully this clears up some misconceptions and gave you a better understanding of the field and what to expect if you're looking to start a career in cybersecurity. If you found this helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more insights and tips on how to break into cybersecurity and the cybersecurity industry. I'll be covering everything from job strategies to in-depth training, so you won't want to miss out on that. Also, if you're serious about taking the next step in your cybersecurity journey, check out the links in the description or the show notes for more details on Station X, more information on getting into cybersecurity. So whether you're looking for practical, hands-on training or mentorship to guide you through, we've got programs designed to help you succeed. And lastly, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop a comment below and let me know which myth surprised you the most or if there's another myth you've heard that we didn't cover. I'll be responding to as many comments as I can. So thanks for listening and see you on the next episode.